Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are on the west side of Los Angeles. We are joined by Mike Gibson. He is a member of the California State Assembly in your district, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Is Absolutely. that right? Any other Cal States in your district? No, just Cal okay. State University Dominguez Hills. Well, I had the honor recently of interviewing the chancellor of the entire system, Tim White. Yes. And he described for me how one in 10 Cal State students are homeless. That's These true. Are Cal State students. That's, that's true. That's, it's alarming to find out that our students who have nowhere to go during the um, Easter break and the summer break are homeless. Most of them are living in their cars, on someone's floors, in abandoned houses. Wherever they can find shelter, they are finding shelter. And there are, there are students. And what's remarkable is in addition to the homeless, he described for me that one in five face food insecurity. Mm, right. I mean, when you're hungry, how do you study for a test? How do you focus on developing a career path through the CSU system? I think it's very difficult, but one of the things that I've seen and witnessed for myself is that a number of schools have food banks. They do. Food pantries. They do. And a number of those students who are, are challenged in this area go and avail themselves of food and things of that nature to help them um, over the difficult times. But what's challenging for some of these students is they're often afraid to be seen inside the food bank. Right. And so I've learned that there are now counselors to help sure. these students through that embarrassment. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still go back to the underlying issue. If you got into the Cal State system, right. something's going right. I mean, you got a brain on your, you sure. know, on your shoulders. Sure. And yet, at the same time, when so much is going right in your life, one in 10 can't find a place to sleep, one in five are hungry. What can we do? I mean, look, well, you're an assemblyman, you know, 80 of you, what, what, what can we well, do? Well, what I've done is I authored a bill. Uh -huh, please. Um, and it's, tw it's 20, um, excuse me, assembly bill. Um, Numbers don't matter. Okay, <laughs> 1228. Okay. That basically allows students who are foster, ah, uh, yes. Foster and homeless, when they receive housing as part of their entrance into a, for a university, mm -hmm. they can stay on campus all year round as long as they are enrolled in that, in that particular now, university. Now, did that bill pass? The governor signed that bill last year in August. Okay. So I'm extremely That's, excited about to that. to me bill. is huge. 10,000 of huge. our students, this will affect in a very positive way. I remember I was speaking with uh, an administrator at Cal State Long Beach. It must have been before your bill got signed because what they were doing at the time was they were trying to figure out which dorms they could keep open right. over Christmas break. So while the students may have needed to move, you know, for two or three weeks, it's, that's fine. I mean, their regular dorm room would just get locked up and sure. they, whatever works, works. Right. So is, this, is it in place? You, you're it's in place. The governor signed it in place. It went into effect 2016, and I'm excited about it because, again, students who have housing, they are no longer displaced, they're no longer homeless, as long as they are attending that university. So let's talk more broadly, though, about the homeless crisis. Because we drive through Los Angeles County, and we come to realize that when the headlines say, LA County homeless capital of America, we know why, because right. we see it. Right. it. You could be next to Cal State Dominguez Hills, which is a beautiful neighborhood. I mean, I go sure. there for soccer and stuff, and yet they're homeless people. Right. It was never that way before. Right. They were on Skid Row, whatever Skid, wherever Skid Row was. Right, 47,000 people are homeless. That's a real reality. You drive down Skid Row, but it's not really Skid Row any longer. It's throughout LA County. And until we actually address it, which I'm happy the city of Los Angeles is addressing it as well now, mm -hmm. and then hopefully the county of Los Angeles is going to address it potentially in March with a, the with a measure. Right. And so with the money that could be generated, we, are no, we will be leading the nation in terms of addressing homeless issues. We will be leading the nation in terms of taking our homeless population and providing not only mental, health, mental right. care for those who need it, but also a stable living environment for those individuals. Not to mention we'll be building housing so that they can be taken off the streets and actually moved into suitable housing. 
One, so they can get wraparound service right where they are, so they can, one, get the kind of health care that they need, two, get them to jobs that they can qualify for, and move them to a level of self-sufficiency. So I'm extremely excited about the leadership in the county and the city taking this kind of bold approach because what I've seen is generation. These are generations of individuals who are homeless. People in Los Angeles who are homeless, living on the street, they don't want to be homeless. That's a misnomer. They want the same thing that we want. We want to be able to live in a, in a decent home and have food and refrigerator, et cetera. They want the same things. But we need to be able to um, cut off that cycle of poverty and also homelessness. And this is the time we can do it. Part of the challenge that cities, counties, and the state face, though, mm -hmm. is finding buildings sure. for the homeless to live in. Sure. And as you may remember, Governor Brown over the summer was looking to create a program for low income housing subsidies. Sure. I guess you could call it affordable housing. It's affordable housing. Ultimately, that measure did not move forward because there was this feeling that local control was going to be taken away. Mm -hmm. You were on a city council, you know from local sure. control. Without getting into the weeds on this, mm -hmm. We do face a challenge in terms of the regulatory environment right. and how, you know, we have no more redevelopment. Right. So there's no tool there to build affordable housing, low sure. income housing, housing that is affordable, whatever you want to call sure. it. So can Sacramento look at this? Okay, Governor Brown's plan didn't make it. What about next session? Well, next session, I think we're going to have a very robust conversation about cr trying to create housing um, that will be set aside um, that individuals can, one, afford to be able to move individuals um, from a place of almost homelessness and actually move them to a level of self-sufficiency, and that is providing some kind of affordable housing. And so even though we couldn't get it done um, this past mm -hmm. session, we are laser focused on this particular issue because if we don't do it during this time, remember California has a rainy day fund. You don't have a rainy day fund if you're doing bad. We have a savings account now, which we haven't had in history before. Now we're able to look at and actually conceive that, w that tomorrow is gonna be better. And how is tomorrow better? And that is making sure those who are most vulnerable to be able to try to address their particular need. And that's housing in California. Housing is so expensive. If you will look at what's happening in Northern California, people are priced out. You can, t uh, you know, homes are so expensive. So that's why oh. people travel outside to come to work because they can't afford to live in San Francisco in those particular areas. And so Los Angeles is moving towards that same trajectory. And so unless we are able to have an innovative plan to try to address it and move individuals into um, homes that they can afford, then we're going to have a, a so, serious so problem. So let's talk about that, this notion of not affordable housing, but housing that is affordable. Housing that is affordable. And that's the challenge. And when we look at the state, we know that we need 250,000 units a year, uh, and we're only building 140,000 a year. And mm -hmm. on the coastal counties, it's particularly acute. We have homes that are averaged price at 466 uh, and that's about two and a half times greater than the national average. Brad, that's one of the reasons why we had a real discussion, a robust discussion, that we're going to have some arguments, we're going to have some fights, but those are worth, certainly worth having because, as you just stated, we need to make sure that people can, one, get into housing they can afford. Two, we need to make sure that regulations and barriers are taken away so that we can build these houses, so we can build people's future so that they can have the same thing that everybody else wants. His name is Mike Gibson. He is a member of the California State Assembly representing significant portions of Los Angeles County. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're in Westchester today and you are joining us on Charter Local Edition.